Legacy media is falling apart, and as it crumbles, a void is opening, a void that we intend to fill. The big legacy news networks currently average just 1.2 million viewers a weeknight, and those numbers are only going to get lower. Legacy media is dying, and the younger generation has moved on. Legacy media panders. Legacy media lies. Legacy media does not know what the truth is, and they don't care about it. Legacy media is a dumpster fire. This is why we few in our wild imaginations have started the Fight Life East Network. Our goal is to take down the legacy media giant of the last 50 years with our five stones. We started in 2016 with our flagship show, Cross Politic. Since those small beginnings, we now air on Direct TV. Our broader podcast network now gets over 4 million downloads a year. And our Fight Laugh Feast pub, which includes TV shows like This America, The Rowdy Christian's Guide, Pastors in Politics, and As the Lord Pleases, with your support, many more to come. Our goal is to become the flagship new media 2.0 network over the next 50 years and take over nightly news, sports, sitcoms, hunting shows, and more. All conveniently stored for you in our Fight Lab Feast pub. We're already reaching the next generation through our podcast shows on YouTube, X, and our pub, while also tapping into legacy media audiences by airing our shows on TV through DirecTV and Xfinity. We have made a lot of progress with some duct tape and a good bit of intuition and a lot of sweat. And now we need your support more than ever. The TV networks have had such a negative impact on our households and we're trying, by the grace of God, to put a stop to that. We have the opportunity. We just need the army. Now more than ever, we need you to join our pub to help us reach our goal of a million pub supporters in the next five years. There's no way around it. Competing with Fox and the Alphabet Networks without money is virtually impossible. It's cheap for you to join. And when you do, you're combining your small monthly support with a growing army of like-minded Christians. We have thousands. We need millions. So if you want more of the Alphabet Network's misinformation and lies, don't join. But if you want to give us a mere five stones, then please join the pub and together we will take a swing at the head of big media, all the while fighting, laughing, and feasting to the glory of God. If we keep doing what we've been doing the last 45 years, then, uh, you know, from, from 1973 to 1992, we had the Supreme Court, and it was a, there were six appointees to it. Every single one of them were Republican. Well, four of those ended up being for abortion, which yeah. means two-thirds of those being appointed by Republicans are for abortion. Yeah. You know, at that rate, you know, even with the most conservative president in the last 50 years, Ronald Reagan, two of his three – we're pro-abortion. Oh. You know, at that rate, we'll never abolish abortion. If 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 our goal is get the Supreme Court to overrule itself, right? Um, then then we'll never do that. Stop a heart that breaks for a dying city. Stop cursing your future. <laughs> is not true. For all intents and purposes, I am a woman. No government, no political system has ultimate supremacy. Jesus is King of Kings, and it's about time our nation returned in humble submission to His Lordship. You are not protecting women. You are authorizing the destruction of 500,000 little women every year. Oh, that's, I didn't start I, it. But sir, sir, with all due respect, that's the argument of a five-year-old. I didn't start it. Right When the Spirit comes upon people, they go to war. They go to battle, and the enemies of God are driven back, and they're slaughtered. You are listening to Cross Politic with Gabe Wrench, the water boy. Pastor Toby Sumter and the Chocolate Knox. We're just two honks and a Negro serving the Lord. We're just two honks and a Negro singing our song. Uh, hey, yo, welcome to Cross Politic. Thank you for joining the honks. Uh, and a Negro. I can't say that. It's not the hunks. I can't. I can't, I can't say that. That's derogatory to say hunks. hunks. It's racist to say hunks. I can't. I can't say that. It's just. I can't. I can't believe oh, I was rubbed. Man. Oh. man, I just want to. I was rubbed. <laughs>
I could have been, not been right. Right? Hey, what are you trying to say? <laughs> right, 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 right. What are you trying to say? <laughs> but I was. What? Yeah. Uh, oh, I could have been right. Uh, he can't, he can't say the word wrong. Is that that doesn't go well for your marriage? I, I, um, <laughs> oh no! I, with my Uh-oh. wife, I'm, I'm, has Sharon ever heard the word she, wrong my, out of your my, mouth? My wife knows how to say wrong. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, she knows. But, but what about what about you, brother? Huh? You know how to say mm-hmm. raw. <laughs> I, I'm, raw. 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 You better learn. <clears throat> you yeah. better learn. Mm. Well, I'll say it, I'll say it for us. I'm, I'm like I grew no, 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 up. No, you don't represent I grew me. Up. I do. Don't, now, don't represent dude, me. Man. We talked about this. That's I'm, I'm your white privilege. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm trying to get my own Gabe. It's funny because I grew up listening to that album, and I always thought it was hunks and a negro. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Look, I've been around a lot of white people. I live in Idaho. <laughs> <clears throat> evidence. So this is just yeah. kind of like evidence of that. Yeah. Been around. No one I know has ever thought of that song as being. I know. Yeah. I, I know. That's, but, that's what's hilarious. I don't think. But I, know what happens is you, you know actually get some wrong? real uh-huh. white Idaho, and everyone thinks it's actually honks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, no. I think I think DC Talk got it wrong. Huh? I can't even what? say that. You can't even say it. They got it wrong. See, I can't yeah. even. I can't do this. Yeah. Thank. All thank, right. Thanks, y'all, to, to everybody that wrote in and told us. Yeah. And pointed out. Oh, that, now y'all want to be detectives. Toby was right. That I was right. Yeah. yeah. For the record. Y'all want to be detectives now? Okay. <laughs> I see how it is. Now they do their research. Like, well, we're talking about white people now. Let's make sure we're right about this. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. Hey, guys. What, what, is this? what are these cameras? Oh, you weren't supposed to see those. Uh, what are you doing? Oh. It's, it's, Evolution, man. It just happened. I walk uh, in one day. Out of the, the ground? They just came up. Just came out? I yeah. just hope that the record button is running. Uh-oh. That's that's all I that have. happens. I, I don't know yeah. what I, I don't know what to do. Do I look? Do I look at the camera? Don't, don't, look, don't, don't look at the camera. Don't the ever. Wall. Don't, look, don't ever. Don't, don't ever break that rule. Um, so a couple a couple of things before we get into cross politic news. Um, I want uh, first Toby is going to be in Indiana at Pastor Bailey's. Are you looking uh, so surprised? Clear note, clear <laughs> note conference. I am. Well, yeah, you are. You are. <laughs> and so I just want to make sure anybody who's in Indiana or in the region, yeah, goes to Bloomington, yeah. Indiana. Yeah, it's just like a forty five minutes, I think, from Indianapolis. Yeah. What's the so, conference about? So, um, it's uh the the title of the conference is the Good Fight. Oh. Yep. The good Laugh fight. Feast? And what's the date? What's the, good, the date on that? The good fight. Um, it's February. Put me on the spot, man. It's fe- February twenty third, twenty fourth, or twenty second, twenty third. Hold on, it's coming up. It's coming. Yeah, I think it starts on the evening of the twenty first. So February twenty okay. first. I think there's registration. Maybe the first talk. I'm okay. not sure. Yeah. And um, and then the twenty second, and then I think it finishes up on Friday morning, the twenty third. So you can get back home okay. for the weekend. Uh, but it's a. I think it's for church leaders in particular. I, I think you, know, you can probably get in if. if uh, what you ta- What you talking about? I'm going to be talking about the good fight. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, yeah. what is the good the fight? good fight? He's working on it. Um, fighting. <laughs> fight, fight, <laughs> it's fight, it's in development. <laughs> fight, fighting <laughs> fighting the good fight. Yeah. Um, I think I think my first talk is entitled um, "The Lord of Hosts," and I'm um, talking Ooh. about how God um, is in the business of raising up. Fighters, oh, um, so uh, you know this is actually the very end. I'll give you the spoiler. Oh, of uh, my book. Should I get my that my organ ready? The Bloodbot World. Have you read? Have you heard of the book Bloodbot World? We got some talking to do. Um, the <laughs> very last chapter. I think this is the last chapter. It's close to the last chapter. Is I think called Lord Host. But one of one of my favorite things uh, that I noticed when I was preaching through the Book of Exodus was um, so you know the word hosts or armies, it's the same word in, in Hebrew, Sabaoth. So, you know, in, uh, in Martin Luther's The Mighty Fortresses Are God, Lord Sabaoth, sometimes you, you hear people messing it up singing Lord Sabbath. Sab- Sabbath. It's yeah, not yeah. Sabbath, it's Sabaoth, yeah. which is the word for hosts or armies. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and, the, and, and the, in the book of Exodus, and, and during the story of the Exodus, um, the word armies is used like, I think, four or five times six times in the course of this, you know, Moses coming in, let my people go. Uh, 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 huh. Mm-hmm. And then we're, we're gone. Yeah. Right. All the way through. Um, so it's usually like, you know, four or five, I don't know, six times, something like that. And not once does it apply. Is it used to describe the Egyptians? Huh. It always describes Israel. Mm. This always is, describes this is my son my army these are my people yeah um and so as they're going out it actually is where it's used several times it says they went out by their armies mm. 
and you're like, you're like, no, 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 Moses, you got that wrong. I mean, they, they're a ragtag bunch of slaves. You know, they, <laughs> they, they, you know, they, they've been oppressed, and they've been, you know, be, you know, the Egyptians have been beating down on them, and they've been, you know, losing their children. And the Lord says, no, these are my armies, mm. marching out victorious armies. And so it adds this color to it where they're, uh, and even in one place uses another word mm. to describe them going out in ranks. Mm. Well, like, I'm in, it, revelation like, while you're like, talking, like, preach, preach. Military, <laughs> military formation. Yeah. You know, and, and so when it says that they, you know, they, they plundered the Egyptians, right? Mm-hmm, you know, they asked their mm-hmm. neighbors and the neighbors are like, yeah, take it, go, go, get out of here, here. here. Please leave. Yeah. You know, um, but it's and like. a couple of them went with them, with a, Israel. A bunch of yeah. them went with them. A with mixed, Israel, mixed yeah. multitude goes yeah. out. Lots of the Egyptians are like, we're with that we're going. God. We're going with that God. <laughs> Yeah, mm, that guy. That guy runs everything. Were yep. there kids in that army? Lots of them. Oh, okay. And and, and just they, one. And they were baptized. Wow. In the in sea. The sea. Paul yep. says that First Corinthians ten. ten. Yep. That's a great infant baptism passage. He says all of Israel was baptized in the cloud and in the sea. Preach, yeah. preacher. Not just the ones that were. You know, I'm never going to get to cross politics. Old news. enough to well, talk. Now, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, come but, on. But that's 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 just one of the that's yeah. one of the motifs where God is about making His people into an army, but it's an it's a different kind of army. Yeah, that's right. Right, the, like this is a reluctant army. It's a yeah. it's a it's a limping army. Ragtag. <laughs> it's a yeah. ragtag army. <laughs> yeah, but they win. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, I mean, right. Egypt is the greatest civilization in the world at the time, and the Lord he got obliterated. Leaves yep. Egypt Broke. in ruins. Yeah. Yep, right. and His people are on the other side of the Red Sea, singing and dancing and praising God. All because right. some handmaids decided not to kill some babies. What yep. army? Yep. Hey, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. Resistance, <laughs> right? Uh, yep. oh, you know, that's, that's yeah. good. Moms well, at let home me, raising me, their kids. So, hey, so hey, this is a good plug for <laughs> Clear Note Pastors Conference. <laughs> the good fight in February. Yes, there's a link in the in the notes, the yep. show notes, and we'll email it out also to everyone. Another conference that Tim Bailey's going to be at. We had one of our pastor friends say, "Hey, can you plug this on the show?" Okay, um, Pastor. Uh, Joe uh, Delumba, hopefully I pronounced that right. Nope, I'm sure um, you didn't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> his first mistake was asking Gabe uh, no, to uh, announce it. Oh. Uh, Grace Bible Church in Mississippi, um, mm. and they have Tim Bailey and his wife coming down. To, and, and the title of this conference is "The World We Made and What to Do About It." Oh, and is this particularly following up on their podcast? On homosexuality? I believe so. Oh, okay. Yeah. When's that? So. But this is actually um, January same, same 19th. Same week, I'm done. No, no, yeah. <laughs> same Tim's week. going. <laughs> He's like, this I'm out of here. <laughs> this is January 19th through the 21st Okay. Um, at Grace Bible Church, and I believe the town is Coldwater, Coldwater, Mississippi, okay. um, and everything. Check That'll also be in our show notes. Check it out. Tim Bailey's going to be there and his wife, man. Yeah. So If you're anywhere yeah. within driving distance. I wouldn't miss that yeah. either. Get yep. there. Get and there. get to know Pastor Joe. Text a picture of Pastor Joe and you hey, and send it to us. Great, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, and, and we'll, apologize for us, to, you know, for for <laughs> yeah. botching his, his name. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. So that is, I think, everything I have on on the details here. Um, me and Chocolate Knox might be in Dallas. Maybe we're working oh, on it. Right. We might yeah, be in, might be in, in Dallas. Texas. So, yeah, yeah. so should um, we talk about? Um, not yet. DC? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> and and possibly in DC <laughs> later. Um, but we'll, big news coming. As, big news. As details big. roll huge. out, it's huge. As we, it's huge. <laughs> huge. As we can work. Is it bigger? And does it work? Yes. Okay. Just <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if it works. <laughs> You, yeah. All that to say is, we got about what seven minutes for cross politic news. Let me That's get into a couple best things. Time for news. Yeah, yeah. Let's, get, let's, let's move on. <laughs> Nothing happened. So this is going to be related to our interview coming up with Bradley Pierce, uh, Attorney Bradley Pierce. Attorney Bradley Pierce. Check this out. Sweet, sweet green stuff. Of course, I'm talking about the money states are making off legal marijuana, because today their buzz was shackled by Attorney General and Gnome on your blacklight poster, who's going to narc on you. Dang. Jeff Sessions. Today, (laughs) Sessions rescinded an Obama-era policy that paved the way for legalized marijuana to flourish. Mm. My roommate in college made it flourish with a lamp in the closet. (laughs) Come on, Jeff. You're the state's rights guy. Would it help you if they smoked the weed out of a rolled-up Confederate flag? This new directive from Sessions can mean only one thing. He still doesn't know that white people smoke pot, too. Oh! (laughs) We can't expose our delicate young ladies to the jazz man's reefer stick. (laughs) I said, good day, sir! (laughs) Beauregard, bring the horses around! Oh, man. Oh, reefer stick? You know, know he's got a point. 
I'm, I'm, oh, absolutely. He's got a point uh, uh, that the state's rights party is all of a sudden not the state's rights party anymore. But I think there's something actually even deeper going on here. It actually is federal law that marijuana is illegal. Right. And so it's a federal law that marijuana is illegal. And if um, all these liberals care about federal law like they say they do, then it should be illegal. But what Obama did in his, you know, with the with the with his pen, he basically said, "Hey, this is a law, but we aren't going to enforce it." Right. And and so if that's the kind of government and the kind of constitution, kind of federal government we have, we're we're walking very closely in, uh, to towards a dictatorship, or very closely to some sort of, um, you know, um, do I need to speak in the mic a little better? Sorry. Please, this is a podcast. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, you're being recorded. Okay. All right. The um the thing is is that we need. This is why we need God's word, yeah. <laughs> to put it quite bluntly and yeah. plainly, because I mean, the I and and this is actually something that was really helpful that Bradley Pierce pointed out is, is going to point out. I'm yeah. going to prophetically. Hey, hey, yes. I, I'm feeling it. <laughs> we know, um, we know he is. But you know, we have the Constitution, but the Constitution isn't enough. Yeah, it's it's important, it's significant, and it and it's helpful, but it's that's under God. Right. It's under God. It's under God's word. And this is why we need God's word. We need to be able to, we need to interpret the laws of the land and we need to apply them with wisdom according to God's word. We always need that because yeah. what's going to happen is otherwise it really is just a big tug of war. Now, yeah. in principle, yeah, you can say federal versus state rights and say- And, and we agree states' rights is- Yeah, like I I think constitutionally and yeah. Tenth Amendment- Lee, mm -hmm. that's not a that's, adverb. I'll really. roll with it. I'll but roll I'm with gonna, it. I'm going to adverb it. Have you heard all the stuff I say on this show? You all right. <laughs> you all right. You all right. <laughs> Just cover behind me. I got you. You know. You know. But so I want to. I want to lean heavy into Tenth Amendment, saying, yeah, whatever is not given to the federal government is retained by the states. By the states yep. Um, in principle, I'm actually don't think that. Um, I don't. I don't think that it should be a federal crime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. to smoke dope. Now. The question is, is okay, what do we need to do right now? Right now we need to stop killing babies. Yeah. Right, right. now we need to stop celebrating uh, sexual perversion. Right. And do I really, really think it's great for, you know, Washington State, 10 minutes away, um, to be getting high? No, not really. Yeah. It's a vice. It's, They've it, legalized the vice. But, but yeah, I mean, if, but yeah. if I have to lean one way, I'm going to lean into the direction of the state's rights and, right. okay, maybe they'll get – High enough to they've you know, legalized a device, a vice, really? a yeah. vice. Yeah, I mean, see, I just did the thing. Yeah, you did the thing. Uh, uh, the, a device. A, a vi <laughs> what are they doing? They with legalized this device? a honk or a hook. <laughs> 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 I mean, but I mean, seriously, like they, that wasn't theirs to make. You know. Anyway, all right. I, yeah, I, I, I'm just saying it's it's not good for them. Sure. It's 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 but but nevertheless. In terms of the technicality of it, no, I don't think I don't think drugs should be illegal. I think people should be it should be legal for people to you know shoot themselves in the foot. Dog on you, but Pastor. but but here's uh, it's stupid. Uh, yeah, right. it's a sin to right. to be drunk to not be sober minded. But if we if we um, decide on a law, we say this is a law at the federal level. Now, now of course, let's let's you're gonna eat that. In a let's second. get away from <laughs> let's get away from the states' rights thing for sure, just for sure. argument just for a minute. It's a federal law. We, it's a federal law. And and then a president says, okay, well, we're just not going to we're we aren't going to overturn it. We aren't going to go to Congress to fix the problem that we have here in our law. Instead, he just takes his pen and says, right. um, but this just ignore it. So what I'm saying though is this is why we need God's law in mm -hmm. place because what I think Trump should do is do that with abortion right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So and, we and, we'd be for that if Trump did it regarding abortion, right. but this we think is right. kind of funny. The problem of course though yeah. is is that you're you're right that what we're doing is we're setting up a precedent of executive orders right. and so forth, and executive power mm -hmm. that really is dangerous because I don't trust the next guy who gets it. Yeah. Well, I don't trust you know Trump. I don't yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. I don't even trust this guy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But if we under if we had a if we had a constitutional republic under the word of God, mm -hmm. yeah, which is what we need. Then we would know which places where, when the when the Supreme Court justices pass a, a stupid law, a sinful law, yeah. then the president says, "I'm not going to enforce that." Y'all do it, you know, do what's right, do what you need, and which is what states should be yeah. doing too. But uh, everybody is authorized to do that. Right. That's a, what's one of the fundamental principles of the Protestant Reformation. Right. If, if God's word speaks. Then it's authoritative. It doesn't matter who you it, are. It trumps man's law. It does. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it doesn't matter right. who gave you that word. Right. The yeah, king, the pope, law. a council. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's yeah, right. If that's it's right. from God, then you have more authority 
than they do. I got, um, since we can't cover everything across Baltic News today, I got, yes, I got two more things to mention here. Um, one is, about nine years ago, Al Gore predicted the North Pole would be completely free of ice. I ain't in no and our pole, Florida, man. our Florida <laughs> listeners are like, my pool's frozen. Because <laughs> <laughs> the North Pole. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did. I, <laughs> the iceberg floated down to the to Florida. Hey, Al Gore, I got one of your icebergs. <laughs> Any more jokes, Gabe? Um, uh, one other one. Uh, actually, when I was in St. John's, um, uh, Canada, don't you know? And um, there was this beer company who prided themselves off making twenty five thousand year old beer um, from a water from an iceberg. So the iceberg is 25,000 years old plus whatever they claimed it to be. The, 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 and that world, was the world's not that old. Kid. Yeah, I know. I know. But the beer company, I, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> it, you had to be there. And, and the last thing was, um, <laughs> so you remember the sexual harassment claims against uh, President Trump during the um, uh, nomination or during the election process? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been discovered that Hillary's campaign spent about five hundred dollars to $700,000 in drumming those up. Um, and finding women, trying to trying to entice or trying to find women to kind of um, bring those charges up. Oh, and so there's a lot of cash spent. You're, you're kidding me? No, I no, am, I am flabbergasted. <laughs> no, this was actually several outlets. <laughs> Why am I not um, having the surprise face? No, I know. You know but, that, that face isn't produced right now. And, like, and here's what's funny is I actually believe Trump probably did some of that. I was gonna say they wouldn't have <laughs> but, to spend that kind of money. Know, really, but they had to pay five hundred thousand dollars to find that out about Trump. Some, some of that got pocketed. <laughs> Some of that got pocketed. Yeah. <laughs> we own you. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's it. That's all you Move got? on. Yeah, you got? I, we keep going. No, 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 no. We need a break. When we come uh, back, Bradley Pierce, Attorney Bradley Pierce, how the Republican Party haven't been helping us with this whole pro-life thing? Huh? What? How do I look? He's wrong. Do I look okay? You look yeah. great. We're going to do some of that forehead, make sure it's not shiny. All right. More across politics when we come back. The American church really is gay. Are you asking me out on a date? Effeminate. The Bible appears more to whisper when it comes to sexual sin. Shallow. I said, I want the African American seven. And full of cowardly leaders. Are we going to keep bickering over secondary issues? America desperately needs to return to the Father. Either we fall on the rock and are broken, or we fall on the ground and are crushed under that rock. To fall on top of the rock and be broken is exactly the condition in which God brings Reformation and revival. So which way is it, prodigal America? Are you coming home to the Father? Join us this Reformation Day in Fort Worth, Texas, October 31st through November 2nd at Will Rogers Event Center, just days before our presidential election. And join with the thousands of us for the blessing of gathering together with God's people and celebrating God's goodness with beer and psalms, hear from speakers such as uh, Dr. James White, Pastor Toby Sumter, Pastor Doug Wilson, Dr. George Grant, Gabe and Knox, Steve Dace, and more. Don't forget our Business Makers Conference, Jumpy Castles for the kiddos, after parties, single events, the pastor's luncheon, the business leader's luncheon, and many more surprises coming. America has squandered her inheritance far too long. It's time she repents and returns home to her father. Fight, Laugh, Feast presents Prodigal America. With us today, we have a special guest, Bradley Pierce. Bradley's a Texas attorney. Hey Amen. That's oh, why we got him on the show. Go. Oh, That's why we got him on the show. Don't, don't hold that against him. <laughs> he helps lead Abolish Abortion Texas. Hey. A group of Christians working to end abortion in his state. AATX, Abolish Abortion Texas, led the efforts to make abolishing abortion a legislative priority for the Republican Party of Texas and advocated the filing of uh, House Bill 948, the Abolition of Abortion in Texas Act by State Representative Tony Tenderholt. 
Bradley's also a co-founding attorney of Heritage Defense, where he helps defend the parental rights of Christian homeschooling families around the country against threats by social services. And, and... Oh, there's more. Bradley, he was homeschooled. Whoa. And... Is a graduate of Baylor University. Oh, strike one. Baylor Law School. Strike two. But, <laughs> but, but he and his wife Cindy have seven kids. Oh, oh hey. redemption! Uh, you have a question for him, Chuck? Uh, they're all baptized, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they all baptized. <laughs> this interview's gonna go one way or two ways. This is. <laughs> once, once, once they're believers, they will be done. <laughs> okay, we better change the subject quick before B- this before gets, this goes, goes, goes sideways. <laughs> you know, let, me, let me save, let me save Bradley. Let me save him. So, so, uh, so, talk to us about uh, a little bit more about um, what you're doing there in Texas to end abortion. Yeah. So, uh, as there are all across the country, there are Christians that are, you know, just getting tired of being on the hamster wheel of, of the abortion issue here, while you know, preborn children continue to to be murdered. Sixty-one million, I believe, now after forty-five years after Roe v. Wade, and and folks are just saying, you know what, um, Roe v. Wade was an unconstitutional decision. We shouldn't have followed it. Um, we need to just abolish abortion in Texas. And uh, so there's, I'm just one of many Christians here in Texas that are that are working toward that. And what what's been your primary focus in terms of, um, especially again as your position as an attorney, um, where do you see um, the particular places where Christians need to be pressing this hard? Well, I, I think what particular issue is that we have a, a view of the Supreme Court that I believe is wrong. You know, the Supreme Court is an office, you know, formed in our Constitution. And um, but the way that we have viewed them on this issue of abortion, uh, we've really made, you know, I, I would call it a civil idol out of them in, in that we have have granted them that they have the power to overrule the Constitution, which says that uh, mm-hmm. We have to, states have to provide equal protection for everybody, and we grant them the power, you know, to violate the Tenth Amendment, which says that power is not delegated to the federal government or less the states. For example, the issue of prohibiting abortion. Right. And you know, we need to. We, you know, the Supreme Court's been wrong before; it'll be wrong again. And when it is wrong in an unconstitutional way, then the states are not bound to follow it. And uh, I think a lot of people are coming to understand that, and uh, just trying to help help with that effort. Let, let's get into how I found out about you was um, that you uh, there's a YouTube clip of you. It's actually like an hour or hour and a half long presentation of you kind of giving the history from the Supreme Court decision in 1973 to kind of now about um, basically this might be not not quite a fair a fair total fair summary, but basically how Republicans have basically um, created the Roe v. Wade legislation all on their own. Yeah, you got that wrong. <laughs> it, it's supposed to be liberals who've been messing this whole thing up, and you said Republicans. We just want to give you the opportunity right now to go ahead and clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I'm a Republican, but uh, the Republicans have done plenty of bad things, plenty of good things. This, this is one of the bad things. So in 1973, the Roe v. Wade court um, was a majority Republican court. Um, there, the actual decision of Roe versus Wade was a seven to two decision. Mm. Six of those seven who voted in favor of Roe versus Wade uh, were Republican appointees. Um, so when we talk about Roe versus Wade, we have to say, and I, I'm sorry, five of the seven, five of the seven were. Woo! Oh, in that case, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for seven, clarifying. Six, no, I, I, that, that's not perfect. Six of the seven were Republican appointees. So. Roe versus Wade, the actual decision itself, was brought to us by Republican appointees. There were only two people who voted against Roe versus Wade. One of them was a Republican, William Rehnquist, Justice Rehnquist, and then one of them was actually a Democrat appointee, Justice White. Um, So from the very beginning, Roe versus Wade was brought to us by the by. Republican appointees by because, because appointees even if, of Republican president. Even if the Democrats voted, all the Democrat Supreme Court nominees voted against it, it still would have passed because there's enough Republicans to, or enough Republican judges to pass it, correct? Yes, there were only three Democrat appointees on the court in 1973. So yeah, even if all of them had voted for it, 
and if all the Republicans voted against it, it'd be a lopsided you know, decision against against abortion. Yeah. <laughs> that that just takes the wind out of the microphone here. <laughs> uh, I listened to your your hour long talk. I listened to about forty five minutes of it, and I couldn't take it anymore. Um, I almost didn't like you. <laughs> uh, you know, because what, all right, <laughs> the job accomplished. Well, part of it was that I think that we've been sold a bag of goods, saying that hey, if we can only vote Republican and people who hold to conservative idea of life marriage because this is this wasn't just about a pro-life issue for me that's just one issue but if we can't get conservative right. judges you know to make godly decisions then we can forget about a burger getting turned over right like right so yeah. and, and so i watched an hour-long talk and one of the things that you said in there you said that there was no justice that is willing to say that a child has a right to life mm. i was like really well what yeah one of the things i said yeah, well, today, so th- there's only one justice who has come out publicly and said that he would overturn Roe versus Wade, and that's Justice Thomas. Um, but none of the justices brother. Have, have said that they believe that the 14th Amendment protection or the, the, the term persons in the 14th Amendment m- includes preborn children. None of them have said that. Mm. And, and see, and you kept going through, like, basically what – our, our pro-life wins look like. And so I, this is, again, right. just to kind of give the Cliff Notes version, what is a, what have our pro-life wins look like? You know, they've been pretty sad. They've been pretty sad, really, for the past 45 years. We, we keep passing these, you know, regulatory laws, um, and then, you know, we keep writing them to try to kind of undermine Roe versus Wade or, or, or chip away at the edges or, or try to comply with it and that sort of thing. And, and we've We've had you know dozens of cases that have gone before the court, and our our wins, the cases that we've won, is that okay, we, we've said, oh okay, only physicians can perform abortions. Oh, you have to get the woman's informed consent. Oh, you have they, they have to keep adequate records of abortions. The federal government can only fund some abortions. State Medicaid can only fund some abortions. You have to have parental consent or court consent for minors. You have to have parental notice for immature minors. Hmm. You have to have a, abortion mills have to be licensed by the state. And you have to, you, you can't use certain resources for abortions. And then we have a federal partial birth abortion ban, which was banning some partial birth abortions, which is one of the most horrific forms of abortion. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's, that's the only case that we've won. Wow. Um, so we're really, all of we won is the ability to regulate abortion just like any other form of health care. No, but a lot of the a lot of the argument is so we're helping make it a fair. big business then. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> sorry, Gary. It's just like that 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 that, that hurts. <laughs> Cuz that's a lot yeah. of people's money who has gone into the pro life yeah, yeah. movement yeah, yeah. to help for the purpose of ending, but all we've done is help make it big business. Yeah. Yeah. Ow. Yeah, that's right. Ow. That that's that, that, that hurts, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Ow. I mean, I'm sure everybody here, but a lot of people listening, have that auto return payment to the ministry that's giving money that you're giving money to to help end abortion, right? And so, but actually, that money. Well, we, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. And you know, one of the reasons that I got fired up about this was because a friend of mine uh, talked to all the pro life organizations here in Texas, and he said. He said, what if, you know, what if some, uh, a legislator put forward a bill that actually just completely ignored the Supreme Court and just, you know, ended abortion here in Texas? You know, wh- what would you do? And not only did those pro-life organizations say, uh, well, we won't support that. They actually said we would actively oppose that bill. Right. And my friend told me this. And states and rights for the unborn. Force, <laughs> and I was like, are you serious? Yeah. They actually said they would oppose it. Right. And and that's when I started, you know, learning more for myself about, uh, you know, how things have gone. And, and, and again, there, there are well-meaning people sure. uh, yeah. who, who are in those organizations, right. but, you know, they're just not willing to say no to the Supreme Court. And, and, uh, and that's, that's so, why we keep ending up on this, this cycle of, yeah, if we can just appoint, if we can just elect Republican presidents and we can get Republican justices, then we can overturn Roe versus Wade, 
Well, maybe I can talk a little bit more about that. You know, that just hasn't worked. So, Bradley, um, we've been we've been talking about the same thing here in Idaho. We have a, a friend who's um, a state representative who went down uh, proposing a bill. Uh, to outlaw abortion in Idaho, and the Republican-dominated uh, Idaho House would not even give his house a, his his bill a bill number in committee, so that it could even you know be considered. And he was discouraged from from even trying to do it by Idaho Right to Life. Uh, yeah. So surprise! Right. So we've seen the exact same thing happening here in Idaho. Um, but one of the things we've also seen is that a lot of a lot of the um, the state legislators, a lot of the uh, politicians, simply have not been educated on these That's topics. Right. That's right. We've we've talked to some of them about like why not just outlaw abortion and then sit there and smile, you know when when yeah, when, right. when the feds come sniffing around, why not just say uh, no, sorry, um, and. Sort of like what California and Colorado are doing right now. What now Marijuana? that Jeff Sessions yeah, yeah, yeah. has basically right. reset right. Um, the Obama era mandate on not prosecuting for marijuana, right. Jeff Sessions has taken that back. And there was a picture, Colorado tweeted a picture, um, I think from the attorney general's office or something, and saying, you know, basically come and get us. Right. Um, we aren't going to do anything. And California right. did right. the same. <laughs> California did the same thing. Right. Come and get us. Right. And so, I mean, that's been one of the things that we've been starting to talk to some of the, the, the different representatives in the Idaho House and Senate and so forth, trying to get word out saying, guys, if you really believe this, I mean, we can do this. Why, why, why are we letting the liberals do this with, with pot and, you yeah. know, illegal immigrants well, or whatever? Right. And, we're, and, and, you know, isn't an unborn child worth way more than that? Um, what do you think as far as the attorney side, the, the law side? Um, we, you know, that's been our thought is let's just pass it and let's just say, come and get us. What, um, what, right. do, you, what do you think about that? I mean, I think it's perfectly legal. It just depends on what you mean by legal. You know, today, most people, they define legal by whatever the Supreme Court says. Mm -hmm. Whereas I, I guess I'm old school. I, I like the phrase that we're a government of, government of laws and not of men. And so if the Supreme Court says one thing and the Constitution says something else and they conflict with each other, we, we do what the Constitution says, not what the court says. And for the state legislators, when they swear an oath, they don't swear an oath to a court. They swear an oath to a Constitution. Yeah. And the Constitution says states have got to provide equal protection. And there's no way we're providing equal protection for the preborn right now. So for, as far as from a legal perspective, the, the text of our of our law of the land, and that is under God, I believe, of course, uh, the Constitution, uh, under that, it's perfectly legal for states to do this. Now, if you say, well, the Supreme Court disagrees, they think that's unconstitutional to do that, well, you know, Again, state legislators, you don't swear an oath to the court. You swear an oath to the Constitution and what it says. Hmm. So what is what is AATX doing to kind of push this topic along, to push this issue along in Texas? Yeah, so we we worked and and push at our at our state Republican level and and by the grace of God got the Texas Republican Party has a list of legislative priorities, five of them for each session that they say, these are the these are the priorities of the party, what we want our legislators to accomplish. And by the grace of God, one thing we got them to put on there was abolish abortion. And, and not just that, but to ignore and refuse to enforce any federal court um, decisions which would deny a preborn child a right to life. Um, and that was one of the Repu Texas Republican Party legislative priorities. And out of that, then, uh, we helped and, and advocated for and, and joined with Representative Tony Tenderholt, state representative here. And he filed a bill, which was signed on to by 11 people, which said uh, we're going to abolish abortion here uh, for every child, no exceptions. And, and, and in fact, even in the bill, the bill even said, and it and of course, I'm it said this in legalese, but in layman's terms, it said, "And if we get sued in federal court over this, we're not even going to show up." <laughs> um, wow! Hey, send that over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So well, the, you know, you say that we are. You know, I'm actually we are. There's lots of other states that are doing similar things, including your own, you know, Dan Foreman there. Yep. And yep. Uh, I'm excited about you know how this is this is you know going all across the country. So where is that bill now? So that bill that the session ended. Uh, like yours there without that bill, it got a number, but it didn't get a committee hearing that was stopped by the chair of the, of the committee. Someone who is a one pro-life organization calls them a pro-life champion. Well, in this case, pro-life champion means killing the only bill, which would have completely ended abortion in Texas. Yeah. Um, and that's what he did. So that's what happened. And we're, we have, uh, legislative sections every two years. So we won't have another one until 2019, but, uh, we're gearing up you know, doing what we can politically uh, to get good is, folks elected and, and let them know that this is an issue that they need to be strong on. And then hopefully we'll be back. Or that Tony Tenderholt, Representative Tenderholt, already promised he's going to refile this bill in 2019. Is that chair up for re-election right now? Well, he actually re- he actually retired. Um, so he, he was up for re-election and we were going to, go do what we could to defeat him, but he saved us the trouble, uh, and he retired. So I don't know who it'll be next time. Hey, Bradley, before we go, after listening to your talk, I think everybody should go listen to it. Um, Just Google Bradley Pierce. It's on YouTube. Uh, But one of the things that I got done with, I walked away with was, okay, so voting Republican is out. Voting, looking to try and overturn this thing through the Supreme Court, that's out. Give us just kind of some options of where we need to put our focus at right now as pro-life people, what's the most effective way that we could be pro-life? I think the most effective thing that you can do is, is, is support bills that completely abolish abortion. And we need to stop settling for bills that merely regulate abortion, you know, bills that regulate, do, do we regulate rape? You know, do we regulate theft? Well, just wait we for regulate it. Murder <laughs> people? You know, yeah. we don't, we don't do those. That's things. right. That's the, right. The, the only reason for any of those bills of regulation is because we have already agreed that the Supreme Court is God and we have to do what they say. That's the only reason that we even try to pass those bills of regulation. And we just need to say, you know what, the Supreme Court's not God. They can't overrule the Constitution. They can't overrule God. And and so why aren't we writing bills that just completely abolish abortion instead of bills that regulate it and actually make things worse, which is that's a whole different conversation. But um, um Bradley, let me you know, like like you just said sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, let me, let me, oh, I want to challenge or ask maybe kind of one kind of challenging question on, on this, on the side of this, where we all agree abolishing abortion is where we want to go, what we want to get to. Um, but, um, we had a, uh, uh, aha up here in Idaho try to push a bill to abolish abortion. It, that was, um, it was just a very blanket bill is uh, abortions, murder, and everyone who's involved in that should be prosecuted to the, um, first degree, for murder. first degree murder. And, and so I was, I would be against that bill because I don't think it, it included biblical justice and how to prosecute for abortion. Um, do you got any comments, thoughts on that? Well, I actually have a long one. You probably don't have enough time for it, but <laughs> I, I'm actually very familiar. I'm actually very familiar with the Idaho petition there and exactly what you're talking about. And, and it, it did say that, um, you know, abortion is defined as first degree murder. But but here's what I think a lot of people miss, and and it's you know reading petitions and reading legislation, you know sometimes you're not getting the full picture when you're just looking at it at face value because yeah. there's lots of other statutes that it's interacting with, and you know maybe I'm obviously I'm going to sound biased here, but I mean there's a reason why you pay lawyers to read it and, and interpret these sorts of things. I knew that was coming. Um, <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that said. Let me tell you, here's what's already the case in Idaho, and that is that killing a preborn child is already first degree murder yep. in it's Idaho in the books. That's right, right now. That's right. Okay. Now, there's an exception for mothers, right? For the mother of that preborn child, there's an exception to that. But she, she's already, you know, the, it already defines it as, as first degree murder. She's already a, a principal in that murder because she aids and abets it because she solicits it and hires a person to do it. So she's already legally defined as as a first degree murderer if she does it with intent and and you know doesn't have a mistake of fact and law and when where a lot of us and and you're thinking rightly that well wait a second what about women who are under duress and wait a second what about women who who don't really know what they're doing well 
the law already provides protection for them. So the kind of protection that you want in that petition, in the Idaho petition, the reason why it wasn't in that petition is because it's already existing law. Yeah. So, you know, the kind of protection for, for women and, and saying, well, some women, maybe they don't, maybe they're not intentional and all that. Yeah, that there's already those protections there. Uh, again, I could go more. I could send some no, stuff that, over That's you, super helpful. I, I, that is helpful. Okay. Bradley, what's the website we can find you at? Uh, abolish abortion tx for texas.com is, is where we put put our stuff or on facebook abolish, i think it's abolish abortion tx or abolish abortion texas on facebook as well awesome thanks bradley bradley pierce ladies and gentlemen on cross politics fighting the good fight please go watch his youtube video i suggest you spend just an hour of your time play it in the background it's worth your time more cross politic when we come back This is Cy Timbrigenke with Answer Anyone Apologetics. In California in the 1950s, car ownerships were printed on pink paper. Racing for pinks was a drag race in which the loser of the race would forfeit ownership of his car to the winner. Now imagine you were going to have a race for pinks. The first thing you'd want to do is make sure your opponent actually owns the car that he's driving. Let's say you produced your pink slip and asked your opponent to do the same, but he just revved his engine and yelled, Come on, let's race. What are you afraid of? Now, you might be confident that you'd win that race, but you'd be crazy to race him if you couldn't prove that the car was his, even crazier if you knew that he'd stolen it. As Christians, we're commanded to engage people with the defense of our faith. Our opponents will come at us with logical, scientific, and moral objections to the existence of God. But who owns logic? Who owns science? Who owns morality? Jesus Christ. In Romans 11.36 we read that from God, through God, and to God are all things. When the unbeliever attempts to engage you, they're doing so with stolen goods, and we let them. Jesus Christ has equipped us with tools for reasoning. Don't let the unbeliever steal them when they want to engage you. Make them account for them. Make them show you their pink slip. For more apologetic answers, visit AnswerAnyone.com. more broad view when it comes to the gay Christian movement and Uh um, I we're going there am friends with um, a a guy who helps to co-lead a Bible study who calls himself gay and Christian but is celibate and I'm wondering as a single Christian woman how I can go about um, bringing truth to the situation. Thanks, Becca, for that question. Um, Where do we get that from? Let me pull a Ben Kinslow. Do, do, let me ask you a question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you a question. Please, go ahead. I, my um, you know, it, if I called myself a racist Christian, Whoa. I'm not a practicing, as Toby pointed out off, offline, I'm not a practicing racist Christian. What does it mean? I don't even know what that means. I'm a, I'm a gay celibate, how non-practicing. You, I'm, I'm scared to even go over your house because I don't know when you're gonna sin. How do you feel about that, David? Because I don't know when you're gonna sin. I don't. I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, what, what other What other sin do we do this with? I'm, I'm a greedy yeah. Christian, but I'm not. I'm not practicing. I'm, but I'm. You know. I'm inclined that way. I'm mm. inclined to greed. Mm. I'm inclined to lust. Mm. I'm a, an adulterous Christian. I mean, I don't practice adultery. I don't, I don't practice it. I don't practice adultery, <laughs> right, but right. but I'm tempted. I think about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, every time I yeah. think about this, I, I I pretty much pull out my, I pretty much rub my head. It's all gone. Um, you pull out your beard. You pull out I, your pull beard. Out my beard. <laughs> well, seriously, because when I think about this, it's like such were some of you that there is a past tense to first, your first Corinthians six. You who you are as a justified Christian, you have a past life. You were. Right. this way but you've been washed but you've been washed you've been clean you've been sanctified right there's a there's a process that you've went through that you're no longer like you were right right and that's what's not happening in this dialogue for me right people are trying to keep the were right attached to them you can't do that right. as a christian and i think it's really dangerous with this particular thing because we we're not doing this this is not happening in a vacuum 
No. It's not it's not like random. It's the new like, norm. Like why do people want to identify as gay? Well, because in our culture, that has is is uh it's being it's being privileged. It's, edgy. it's being it's privileged. Edgy. It's sexy. It's yeah. edgy. Yeah. It's it's cool. metro. But the it's uh, hipster. The uh, <laughs> the the liberal elite are trying to put these people as make them the high priests of our culture. Yep. Yeah. yep. So, so we have yep. they, they are authorities on what it means to be oppressed. Yeah. And misunderstood and hurt. And now everybody needs to shut up and listen to them. Yeah. It doesn't rub them the wrong way. Well, and think and think related to that, how Christendom responds when they hear that now. Well, that's right? what's happening. And yeah. So what's happening is why is it that there are a bunch of Christians that are coming out as gay and celibate right now? Why? Well, because the world told them to. Oh, man. Yeah. Right? Because, Imagine if this happened 20 years ago right. and they came out right. as, um, um, I'm gay, celibate, Christian. Right. You know, how would the right. how now, would church now, respond? How would culture I'm not respond? Saying that, I'm not saying all the churches would have responded the way they should because I do think, and, and back to, you know, Tim Bailey's been really good on this, his book Grace of Shame uh-huh. yep. and some of his other stuff. I mean, um, I believe wholeheartedly that the gospel needs to be brought to bear and that these people need to be ministered to, just like any other sin. Yeah. Just like any other sin. The church is a place for sinners to find healing. But but but, but but what's going on though is they're privileging the world is teaching us and the mm, world and yeah. the church is currently being discipled by the world on how to talk about this issue. Yes, you know, and, yeah, that's right. And, right. And, and so and that's what's wrong about this. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, we I mean imagine you know let's do this. Let's have people start coming out as racists. Yeah, yeah. I mean not practicing racists, but racist Christians. Yeah. They're really inclined to racism. I identify. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a white supremacist Christian. I mean, I'm not I'm not really a practicing yeah. white supremacist, but I'm. I'm inclined that way. No, mm. no, nobody's going to do that because you'd be so, a, you're a pariah. Yeah, and I think there's two people that I, I remember you said this. Uh, I don't remember if it was on the show or to me, but you, we were talking about race as we tend to do a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, and you said, you know what? One of the things that are be, that black culture is being lied to about is about how white people are, right? You remember that? And it was like they're lying to us about race. The, the 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 guys who are the supreme thinkers are lying to us about the whole narrative. I think you lean towards some of that even in one of the shows, yeah. and they say, and we're buying it, right? Mm-hmm. And and but I think there's a group of people who are actually struggling to do something, to be Christians, to be a certain way. And there's another group of people who are saying, oh, that's okay. This struggle isn't is you know you don't have to be that far on. Like you right. can you can work your way there. And it's like right. And so I think there's a group of people in this in the community who are struggling to be the way that God has designed them to be right. who passionately want that. And, and then they're b- buying the bait. They're buying the right. lie that you aren't actually there. Right. So, and so you, what, you can be gay and Christian too. And a lot of Christians are coddling that sin. That's right. And, mm. and ra- rather than, mm. I mean, that, you know, Paul says, put to death. That's right. The, the deeds That's of the flesh, right. put it to death. I and mean, we don't do that with, you know, pornography. Yep. You know, guy, guy says, there. I'm struggling with porn and we don't, you know, we don't create a special category for him as, you know, he's, he's, you know, a porn Christian. Yeah. Matter of <laughs> fact, I even get yeah. mad when people say, oh, brother, let's talk about it. Oh, I, what? Right. What is wrong with you? They, hey, they, stop it. They do. They, <laughs> stop it. What's stop wrong it. with you, man? Stop it. They, they do need accountability. They do yeah. need uh, pastoral care. And he smacked in the head first. But, but, but they don't. But that's they my don't, That's why care. David's not a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't need. They don't need the. You're right though. They don't need to be put in a group with a bunch of other people who are struggling oh, with the man. same sin. Let me tell you about last night. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I, I, another thing popped in my head while you guys were talking. Um, it seems like there's kind of another reaction to this that the that this movement is trying to, or how they're responding to this. So some people maybe identify as, "Hey, I'm a gay celibate Christian." And then some people on, in this movement also want to just say God wants holiness, not heterosexuality. Yeah. God wants God wants you to be holy, yeah. Yeah. and He doesn't. You know, it's not hetero. It's not about heterosexual. It's not about homosexual. It's about holiness. Yeah. Um, What's wrong with that game? Well, I, me and David were talking this week, and without I, me. Yeah, Oops. I'm sorry. Oh man, I'm uh, working on his racist we'll, side. We'll talk to him. I'm, I'm working on his racist holding side. He's holding me accountable. I'm holding accountable. <laughs> He's my accountability partner. <laughs> Stop it. See, well, I, see think, won't be I, think, I think what's wrong with it is that basically what they're arguing for is some sort of androgynous holiness. Right. Right. Let's just right. eliminate who you're made in the image of God and who God has called hey, you Gabe, to be. Define holiness as for for a man that's struggling with um, homosexuality. Holiness is where you set apart yourself to God's word against this world and against your sins. Yeah. But holiness is grounded in the way God made the world. Right. 
Right. So if he made exactly. you male, then holiness means being a male. Man. Male, mm-hmm. being a right. man before God in purity and righteousness. And same mm-hmm. thing for female. Yeah. Um, if God made you female, holy means using the body, the personality, right. who God has made you to be for his glory. Because the only way, the only way God gives us the only route God gives us to be holy right. in the context of who he made us as is to be heterosexual. That's right. Now, that doesn't mean you're married or not. That's right. No. Yeah. Right. Heterosexuality has not to do with your sexual state. Right. It has to do with right. your sex and your orientation to the world. Right. Ex- That's exactly. Right. That's right. And, and uh, You can't separate holiness and sexu- hom- uh, heterosexuality. Right. They're, those are in the same direction. Right. It's, mm. it's a redundant statement. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you see a lot of all a lot of this is being driven um this movement is being driven by a bunch of um generally speaking people who weren't fathered well. No, it's always right? father hunger. And sure. Right. And and um and so they're coming up with all their own language and how to kind of deal with this issue. Now, I, I I grant a lot of them actually are fighting their sin well, they're doing it well, they're they don't well, want to fall. Of, there's a lot of well-meaning Christians it, that are talking this way. I have friends. But who, I, I love right. your point about like, hey, we've been catechized, we've been catechized by the world and how to talk about this. Right. Yeah, we and, and as that, opposed to looking the scripture. And that's, that's exactly what Romans yeah. 12 says not to do. Yeah. Do not be conformed to this world, but be, but be transformed by, by the, the renewing, renewing of, of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's why Tim Bailey stings. Oh yeah. Because when I hear Tim Bailey, what mm. I think about is Bible. Right. And when I hear him, I'm like, oh, duh, that's the Bible. It stings. Right. You know, right? Right. You know I, actually, I think we need to make a verb like you've been baileyed. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think we need to make that a verb. You got baileyed. You got, you got baileyed. baileyed. I think we need to make this a verb because it's Bailey, same, Bell, you know, Bailey. Well, because Bailey, Tim Bailey does something where you think, oh, you're going to get those guys over there. You go get them, Tim. Mm-hmm. Get, mm-hmm. oh, why you hit, why you pointing at me? Great. That that yeah. hit me, Tim, and that's mm-hmm. that's getting bailied. Where you expecting somebody else to get hit, <laughs> but you actually are the one getting hit yeah. yourself, you know? Right. Yeah. It, his is uh, the the podcast they did with him um, uh, from Warhorn. Um, it's the title of that conference: um, uh, "The World We Made." Okay. Okay. Hi- Plug number two. Hi- highly recommend Ooh. it. <laughs> yeah, you've heard it twice on here. Go and, to Mississippi. And, check him out in two weeks, and, three weeks, and the book uh, "The mm-hmm. Grace of Shame." Uh, both, oh, both of man. those are are hard hitting. Uh, addressing the issue of homosexuality, a homosexual temptation, but really trying to get at the heart of it, um, the the brokenness that you know it, it's it's it goes a lot deeper, yeah, than you yeah. usually hear. No, it um, it hits that's, you, but that's that's the issue. And and you know, to this gal's question, I think there's a lot of it's hard to answer that question. Like, how do you help this guy as a single woman? Yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful. a single man. I think it was a single man, but no, she's, she's a single. She's, oh right, right, right. Okay, and, yeah. and I'm just saying, you know, you got to be careful. It's it's, uh, you know, I, I think what you need to do is try to point him in the direction of some good resources but what he needs right. is strong godly men in his life That's right. who are going to call him to be a man and you can't do that you can pray for him mm-hmm. and you can point him in the direction of good resources but you also want to be careful because you can actually make things worse you know can uh, i just speak to that too is like one of the things that men don't want to be associated with is other gay men like that's like a, especially in christmas that's kind of like like ooh to us you know like come on bro like mm-hmm. step off like you know mm-hmm. uh and but the very thing that they need to be around is good men. Is good men. That's right. Is good men, solid men, men who like Tim Bates, I love you. Like you're not gonna outdo me loving you, right? Like, right. like to the point he grosses right. out gay guys. Like, yeah, oh my yeah. god, you know. <laughs> you gonna kiss me? I'm gonna kiss you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Tim, if we but, need but each other, hold a kiss. But you gotta be able to. You got. You gotta have a. I mean, I think you're absolutely right. What you're talking about a minute ago with the porn problem. I mean, like you know, a, a good godly man is gonna be able to hit you upside the head Ab- and love you at the same and, time and hug you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, that's and exactly say, right. I love you and uh uh-uh. uh. Yep. Um, yep. And. But that's what a man needs. That's exactly, yeah, absolutely. And that's, what, and that's what that man needs. Yeah, and he's been needing that since his daddy. That's right. Right. That's so, right. Yep. yeah, at the end of the day, that's, that's it. So that came from Memo, which you can send us memos at memo at crosspolitik.com, right? Yep, right? yep. Memo at cross, crosspolitik.com. Record it on your phone, send it to us, and we'll play it here on Cross Politic. Hey, guys, this is Eric from D.C. area. Hey, um, Eric. David said today that... Uh, he has seen um, huge dividends for his family from his uh, commitment in the past year to serve his family. I would love to hear him and all you guys talk a little bit more about what we as fathers can do practically in serving our families. It's a big thing to say, serve your family, and, and I, for yeah. me at least, hard to think through 
the details of the actual application of that and how I should be living that out. So I would love to hear more discussion about that. Thanks, guys. Mm. First, first, Eric, thank you for listening to Cross Politics. Uh, <laughs> we'd love to have you listen. And you know what? Thank you so much for uh, sending in a memo. We appreciate that. Uh, man, you know what? I just want to say this is boring. The answer to this is really boring. It's just, this is not like some big aha moment, you know, that I had for me. It wasn't like, oh, okay. Um, it was actually love and trifles. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's boring, but the, at the same time, I mean, I'm, I'm going to push back on you a little bit. It's, yeah. But it's so sweet. Oh, absolutely. Right? No, I'm not. So, so, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you're right. I mean, the 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 the, the how the what to do. There, yeah, there isn't it, some. I like guess it's, it's not it's not like there's some like magic thing. You're not going to have some big aha moment. You're going to be like, oh, but but doing <laughs> doing the the little things like you said, love, love and trifles, love and trifles, yeah. man, is yeah. it, it, it reaps sweet dividends. So let's make a list. OK, so well, Ready? I think every okay. family's okay. different. Okay, you go. Uh, every family's different. You know, one of the things for me, simple. Um Making coffee for my wife in the morning. I'm just gonna go through the day. Okay, go making coffee. Make coffee for, for, yeah. yeah. Sending text messages to my wife, letting her know I'm thinking about her. Doing, you doing, it, doing it right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Game you know, like, uh, like scribbling notes uh, down right doing now. Doing it right now. Yeah. You know, take. You know, Annie, you can think us later. Yeah, the, yeah. The diaper changings are huge. Get making sure you get the big ones. Yeah. Making sure you get the dirtiest ones. I remember Matt Whitling. Uh, he's a headmaster mm-hmm. at yeah. at uh, Logos School. Yeah. He he's done parenting conferences over the years, and he always says, "Men." You you um, beat your wife to the punch. Like mm. you see the dirty diaper and you say, "Oh, I got it." Yeah, try yeah. to be the first one to get yep. it. I failed at that a lot. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I failed at that a lot, and right. those are things that I'm w- still working yeah. to fix. And and that has radically. Those are just, yeah. and I can go on and on. The question, the, the question, can I get that for you? Uh, <laughs> right, can I get that can, for you? Can I Should get that for your, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like regular. I don't even ask the question. Can I get that anymore? For you? Hey, I got that for you. Yeah, I don't even say it. She just, oh, that's done. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's even better. Um, kitchen, kitchen is clean. If she can't get to cooking dinner, mm. you know, um, cleaning out her vehicle, cleaning up the house, or having someone else come over yeah. to do it for her. Yeah. I mean, taking care of the kids, um, taking them out so she can have a moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, every little thing that I can think of for her is where I start at. Yeah, when you love your wife's children, you are loving her. That's right. When, yep, you, when absolutely. you love your wife's children, yeah. you are loving That's her. Right. Well, I'm going I'm to throw my three cents in. Okay. Um, I can keep going too. Yeah, yeah. I know you. I, yeah. You're, yeah, you're you, he pretty, was he was rolling pretty hot. Man. I know. I'm saying, um, she thinks so. I, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna add to that. I, I know this is on your list too, but um, you need to really love your wife. You need a romance. Absolutely. Her. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, I mean, you know, you walk in the house. That's, that's my that's my favorite part. I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say what I put I'm, in the text message. I'm really, really, you know? really good at that. You need, to, <laughs> you need to walk up to your woman. I seen the clothes you wear. I don't believe you. <laughs> Come on, bro. And you, you, you need to hold your wife. That's right. Yeah, amen. Hold her close. First kiss hold goes to my wife when and you walk you in the door. you give her a kiss. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Give her a good one. Yeah. You, you mean make it. the kids say, ooh. Yeah, make the kids say, ooh. Yeah, take make it to the say, bedroom. Uh. If, the kid, if the kids aren't, aren't a little disgusted, you, you, ain't, doing it it, you ain't doing it right. You did yeah. it wrong. Yeah. You, need to love, you need to look her in the eyes and you need to tell her you love her. Yeah. You rub your, your wife's feet. And you, you need to tell yeah. her you love her. You need to tell her she looks good. That's right. She's beautiful. You need to do yeah. it regular. Yep. Um, regularly. And you walk in the room, go say hi to her again. Yep. You know, you've been you know doing something else. Walk in, go go put your hand on her. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Um, go, That's right. Go love her. I got, I got one to add. Um, uh, um, one of my... Um, favorite things to do is, is pray with my wife every night. Yep. Yeah. Every night, no matter how tired you are, maybe it's a short prayer, maybe it's Lord, we love you. Thanks for taking care of us. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um. Or, or or you know, but every night make it a goal, and then watch that after forty years of praying with the wife every night. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, catechizing your kids. Yep. Throw some yep. more in there. Yep. Every morning. Yep. Jump on it. Yep. Uh, on our way to school, we've created that time as catechism time. Mm-hmm. Who is God? What, what catechism do you do? Um, so I've kind of made up one. You oh, know? Oh, oh, so yeah. Oh, you got a chocolate knock so He's kinda, also he's got his own denomination, kinda, kinda, his own Presbytery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, so I've kind of decided to take, and I wanted to be practical. Chocolate in the knocks, world. Westminster so Confession. So I kind of I kind of stole some of this from Darren Down, the filmmaker. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I yeah. went, I rode with him and his kids, and right. and I was like, I'm still in that, right. and it's like he asked him, he says, "There's no truth. Is that true?" <sighs> There's no such thing as absolute truth. Right. Is that absolutely true? You know, that's one of the things that if you think you can just grasp that yeah. little thing, that's 85% right. of bad doctrine, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. And your so kids, th- your kids are smarter than you think. 
They are, and they can handle more than you think. If you yeah. don't know that, I mean, you know, yeah. um, my you might be a Baptist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My, <laughs> my, my my oldest is 13. My youngest is six. And and sometimes we get home from church, and my six year old got more, or at least is able to articulate more from my sermon than my older kids. Wow. Yeah. And it's striking. And they'll all yeah. laugh and look at him and be like, that was good. What? And he's like, <laughs> you know, and he's got like 10 more pictures than they do. But, you know, like he's been yeah. drawing dragons and swords <laughs> yeah. and, you know, monsters and Your stuff. Your kids draw yeah. in church? Oh yeah, they do. Okay. We'll talk about oh, that. Oh yeah. Then. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're paying attention. Yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, he's, uh, <laughs> but the, I think you're right. And, and wait. And so I think that catechism thing, the principle there is talk to them about real stuff. That's right. Don't That's right. don't even just keep it at the Sunday school level. Talk to them about truth. That's talk to right. them about absolute tr- truth. Talk to them about relativism. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and, and I think sometimes I've, I've been slow to do this, but I think I need to talk to them about the things that I, I care about, the things that I'm thinking about, the things that are going on yeah. in the world. Yeah. And so I just, I sometimes talk about stuff that I, I don't even know if they're following me. Yeah. You know, I don't even know if they're understanding me, yeah. but I'll still bring it up. Yeah. You know? I'll still talk about it. And, 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 you know, um, you know, I, I brought up. I told him a little bit about my my uh, my Tim Keller post this week. You know, yeah. for example, I was just like, and, there, and my, you know, my way to sneak that in there. My my, my, uh, my son is like, well, what did he say? You know, and I, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I like tried to explain it to him. I was like, well, is he you know saying this and you know, and he's like, well, you know, and and I had like unpack it. Yeah. Right. They're asking me questions. And I don't know how much they got, but but we're talking about real things. That's catechizing. Deuteronomy six says to talk about it yeah. when, you, when you rise up. When you walk by the way, when you sit down, when you sit down yeah. Yeah. right? When you um, go to bed. Yeah, but yeah. it's, it's just got to be natural. You're talking about it um, more, you know, all the time. Right. Even when we do, we do, you know, we do family devotions yeah. regularly. Yeah. Um, I try to keep it pretty short and sweet most of the time. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember when I was young, when I was a young dad, I like, I was like, you know, I'm gonna thirty minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna like I'm gonna stand on my We're chair. We're gonna do a liturgy, and I'm gonna do a liturgy, <laughs> and I'm gonna preach him a sermon. We all did yep. that. Yeah. We all did it, right? And yep. it's like, uh, no. No. Yeah. No. Just, yeah. just, just relax. Yeah. You know, get, get out your Bible. Read them a few verses. Read them a story. Yeah. Do a picture, talk about talk about the do, story. Do a picture Bible when they're young if yeah. you want to. Yeah. Um. You know, but then just talk about it. Ask them a couple questions. What yeah. happened? And and then sing a song and pray and be done. Yeah. yeah. And make it happy. Yeah. Make make it Amen. fun. Make it happy. Make yeah. it sweet. But love them though by reading the Bible to them. Yeah. Love them by singing with them. Love them by praying for them and with yeah. them. The reason I That's think that good. we have such That's a big buildup like that is because we're not doing it throughout the day. We have this right. moment that's set aside and say, no, this whole day, every day is set aside. Right. I, my friend, Pastor Ray Rose, who wrote a book on family worship, one of the things that he really helped me understand a long time in Georgia, which was, hey, if a leaf is falling from the ground and you're taking your daughter on the walk, ask her, why do seasons change? Mm-hmm. Why does right. a leaf die and where does it come back at? You know, mm-hmm. ask her these things and teach her about God's world and why these things happen. Right. Tell them about sin. That's a perfect time. Why is this thing dying? Right. Oh, yeah. but guess what? It's coming back. Resurrection. You know, you get to talk right. about Jesus in every moment that you have with your child. So right. I, I, th- 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 those are just dis- some ways. Sa- same thing with the regular discipline. I mean, if you're, yep, if you're disciplining right. your kids, every time you discipline your kids, you are an evangelist. Yeah. Amen. Which is, Amen. I can't understand if, why it, Baptists... Get to discipline their kids. If the, anyway, that's okay. <laughs> but you're sharing, yeah. you're, sharing, yeah. you're sharing the gospel with them. That's yeah. exactly right. Jesus Come on. died for this sin yeah. so that you can be forgiven. That's Let's right. ask him to forgive yeah. you. Let's walk with Jesus. I want to add one, one thing. You started out saying that this was boring, right? You said that, that this is kind of this is well, there's nothing it's, exciting it, about this answer. There isn't. But it's just what, what, what you Paul, should be doing. I'm on my second Corinthians kick, and Paul says that your obedience brings revengeance on disobedience. Revengeance isn't a word, but yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll ride with your, it. Uh, can you edit this? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore with the video cameras. It's all here, baby. <laughs> your revengeance <laughs> brings de- oh, your obedience brings revenge on disobedience. You need to say it like so Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> being revengeance. Re- revengeance. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, don't forget to check out our Cross Politic Club. Don't forget to check out our merch. Uh, what else we got going? We you got a bunch share of things. This. You know, share it. If yeah, this share blessing, our show. Share it with your friends. I think that's it. Is that it? That, that, for should, me. They, should they fight or feast or anything like First, that? First, they need to love God with all their heart, oh, that's right. there we soul, go. mind, and strength. Okay. Love yep. their neighbor as self, and then they need to go fight, Okay. laugh, and feast. Hey, this is Cross Politics.